Hello, everyone. This is Jenna Ryan, your self-love life coach. And today I want to talk to those of you who are on my channel who are going through breakups or will go through a breakup or have in the past. And this is a audio of 10 essential breakup boundaries for when you are experiencing a breakup. This is by, this information is by Natalie Liu in her website called Baggage Reclaim. This website has been helpful for me to determine my boundaries in my life, and I find it to be very helpful and very useful. And I thought I would go ahead and go over these boundaries for my self lovies because I want you guys to love yourself and have self respect and dignity. These boundaries, according to Natalie, need to be non negotiable for every woman or man. This is good for men and women. If you want to be in a healthy relationship with your self esteem intact, you need to make sure that you have certain boundaries when you break up that are just non negotiables. Okay, number one is when someone rejects me and the relationship we shared by breaking up with me, I will register this red flag, step back, and not attempt to change their mind. So if someone rejects you, if someone breaks up with you, do not attempt to change their mind. There's nothing you can do. At the end of the day, you will only end up sacrificing your dignity. And these are my words. And this is basically what Natalie is saying in her article. Do not try to change someone's mind. If someone decides that they do not want you or they found someone else, they've moved on, they're rejecting you, they've decided they want to date other people, whatever the reason, let them go. And my advice is that you learn to detach from someone who is rejecting you. It should be like an automatic switch. When you're rejected, you detach. You detach from that person. There's no getting them back once they've rejected you. There's nothing good for you when you turn things around. You have to face reality. You have to accept reality and love yourself enough to walk away. Okay, number two. I will not settle for less for having the sake of having crumbs rather than nothing at all. Do not settle for less in relationship. If someone downgrades you from a girlfriend to a side thing, that is not okay. If someone downgrades you from their boyfriend to their sugar daddy, That is not acceptable. You may be in pain because you feel rejected, but crumbs is not better than nothing at all. It's better that you have nothing at all, that you are no contact, that you move on with your life and detach than it is to continue to have the wound opened up and hurt over and over again by accepting crumbs from someone who has rejected you or broken up with you. It's a, she says here, it's a fast and extremely slippery slope of pain and disrespect. And she says, leave it be. If you are destined to be friends, it won't be because you hung around straight after the breakup cocking each other's lives up, poking around in each other's emotions, and keeping a foothold in each other's lives. You may be able to be friends later on, but not now, not in the beginning, not for a year or two. Do not settle for crumbs. Number three, I will cut contact to give myself time and space to grieve the loss of the relationship. You need to give yourself time. You need to give yourself space to grieve and loss the loss of the relationship. That means 
not following them on Facebook, not watching their new love relationship blossom on Instagram, not continually taking their booty calls, not continually calling them, begging them, or trying to get all your stuff, you know, let your stuff go. Cut contact and give yourself time and space to grieve the loss of the relationship. You're, when you lose someone, it hurts, and you're going to go through a process of grief. Give yourself time to, to get over it. Um, no contact is a great way to help to clear the toxins out of your life. The toxic relationship, the toxic situation. You got to stay away. You got to go no contact. You got to move on. You got to detach and move on with your life. Number four, I will recognize lazy communication for what it is and not inflate it into any, into them actually missing me and wanting to get back together. A lot of times, whenever you're in a relationship with someone, they will come back to you, send you a Facebook like, or they will text you and say, I miss you. Or, you know, little things that are just real cheap, not calling you up, not coming to your house, not courting you, taking you on a date, but just being very flippant and just making sure that you're still around for them. And they're really just building their ego up and trying to make themselves feel better to make sure that they still have you whenever they want you. Well, you need to recognize that as lazy communication. That doesn't mean that they want to get back with you. It doesn't mean that you're going to drop everything and get your hopes up. It doesn't mean that at all. You need to see lazy communication for what it is and not put too much stock in it. Just ignore it. It's not anything that you need in your life. Number five. For the sake of of not confusing myself or causing me to do something that I regret later, I will not sleep with my ex. If I do, I will accept responsibility for the consequences. Natalie Liu is such a good I love the way she she writes things, and I love what she says. This is so true. You don't want to sleep with your ex. You don't want to continue to open the wound. You don't want to let them come back into your life only to leave and go sleep with someone else. A good rule of thumb is not to do it, to not sleep with your ex. Sex can confuse things, can cause you to have feelings, can cause you to become attached, and you just don't want to be attached to your ex who is just going to throw you under the bus by leaving again. That's opening a wound again and again that you don't deserve and you don't need. Number six, I love this one. I will not bombard them with my love. And then she says, this is an incredibly important boundary that's there to stop you from not only getting carried away with continuously trying to show them how much you love them, but also to protect you from crossing their boundaries. So I say, don't don't bombard them with your love out of your own dignity. Because when someone has rejected you, someone has broken up with you, they don't need to know how much you love them. I mean, you might want to let them know, like, you know, in a phone call or, you know, at a restaurant, I really love you and this is really hurting me, but that's enough. You don't want to bombard them. You don't want to overwhelm them. You don't want to try to force yourself on them. You don't want to cry to them. You don't want to, you know, tell them you'll do anything for them. You just have to accept, accept the reality that they have made a decision to walk away from you. And if that is the case, then you love yourself enough to walk away yourself, to let go, to detach, to move on, to move forward, to continue your life. There's wonderful things ahead for you in life, 
but not if you keep going back and bombarding someone with your love who has chosen to move on. Number seven, I will recognize when I am becoming obsessed with my ex and will force myself to step back so that I don't end up trapped in denial. A lot of my listeners need to really hear this one. You have to force yourself not to become obsessed. You have to know when you're becoming obsessed and stop doing it. Don't engage in behavior that causes you to lose your dignity. You don't want them to call you a psycho or stalker. Then you're going to feel like total crap about yourself. You want to keep your dignity intact, which means no contact. You do not need to be focused on anyone else when you're going through a breakup. I know it's hard, but you've got to keep yourself busy, keep yourself engaged with other friendships, stay focused on your interests, do things that are creative, productive, and forward in the forward direction, moving you forward. You don't want to go backwards and become obsessed with someone who has rejected you because you love yourself enough to walk away. You don't want to keep tabs on them. You don't want to go watch their Facebook. You don't want to keep clicking on their ex-girl or the girl that they're dating now or the man that they're dating. You don't want to hurt yourself that way. You deserve so much better. Number eight, I will not punish myself for the breakup by neglecting me or doing stuff that is essential me acting without love, care, trust, and respect towards myself. So don't, basically this means just take good care of yourself. Practice good self-care. Don't hurt yourself by gaining 20 pounds. Don't hurt yourself by fr- by failing to work out. Make sure that you continue to practice good self-care. Love yourself. Treat yourself kindly, even better than you've ever treated yourself before. Like literally, like douse yourself in lotion. Um, Buy yourself a new outfit. Buy some new cologne. Um, Get yourself a massage. Um, Buy yourself a new bedroom suit. Paint your house. Do home repair. Learn how to play piano. There's all kinds of things you can do to take care of yourself and love yourself and not neglect self-love and self-care. Number nine, I will not keep trying to get back together with someone who has already rejected me more than once. Okay, if someone has rejected you, you've got to make yourself a deal that you will not try to get back together together with that person. That is a rule. If someone rejects you, you move on. Boom. Just that easy. Love yourself enough to walk away. Do not try to get back together with them. If they've rejected you, that is all you need to know. It's time to move on and continue with your life in a, in a forward, forward orderly direction. Don't just keep on getting rejected again and again. I mean, some guys or some girls may let you back in their life, but once they've rejected you, that is pretty telling, and it means that it's time to move on. There's nothing that, I love the way she says, you know, what the hell is so special about them that you would even give them the option to reject you again? Okay, so we're reading from Baggage Claim dot co dot uk and this is the 10 breakup boundaries that really is like a good bible for whenever you break up with someone or someone breaks up with you 10 i will not wait and put my life on hold for anyone when you break up take it as a final and get on with your life there's a temptation to hang around and wait and see if they change their mind And keep, you know, keep them on the back burner. But the fact of the matter is, is that your life is short. 
Life is not forever. We only have so many days on this planet. And as long as you know how to love, I know you will survive. That is a song. You will survive. You know how to love. You have a heart and you are beautiful. You are amazing and you will find love. You will find someone that loves you and respects you and will not reject you. And you've got to believe in yourself and you've got to love yourself and you've got to stay away from this person who has left you because you deserve better and you are amazing. And so that is all for today's audio. I hope you guys like it. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you're interested in life coaching, come to me at selfloveyou.net. I'm doing life coaching, and I also have my Self Love 101 program, and you can get that at selfloveyou.net. Until next time, I'm Jenna Ryan, and I will talk to you soon.